Why evolution fails at junk food? The thing is, junk food is not very good, therefore evolution could be like, yeah, that's not very good, therefore in the long term, it would not be an optimization if we just take the food into our bodies and therefore, because then, I mean, it's more likely we die earlier, it's more likely we get cancer, it's more likely we get, like, obese. Now, the thing is this. Why does evolution fail? Evolution is something that's very long term. It's basically a systemic process that happens over millions of millions, maybe billions of trillions of years. Now the thing is, we develop these chunky foods only in like the, f the last hundred years or the few, the last few centuries basically. So I don't know when the sugar cane, for example, was invented, not really invented, but discovered and then mass produced, not really mass produced, but modified in a way that we can actually access all this sugar. The thing is in the past there used to be like carrots and the carrots were just there and carrots are just very little they are not very dense in energy. The only thing that was very dense in energy for, for one, meat, and for two, also nuts. And if you think about it, it's kind of nuts, but the thing is, whenever in the past we hit something like a nut, then it of course made sense for our brain and therefore also opti opti evolution to optimize for these foods. Because basically these were like jackpots because these are very energy dense, very, very energy dense. Therefore, it would have made sense to, for one, make you hungry or make us hungry after we ate the food because the chance of the food being available in an environment where the food just was, the temporal dimension, available before is much higher than 10 years after. The thing is, in this particular time, it made sense for our brain to optimize for these very calorie-rich foods and also for foods that are very sweet because sugar is very calorie-rich and the less sweet something is, the less, the more complex the carbs are and the more complex the carbs are, basically the more fiber. So basically a carb is something like a sugar, but sugars are also carbs, so carbohydrates, carbs is only short for carbohydrates, and therefore it's like one molecule. And if you have one sugar molecule, then you can basically add another sugar molecule, and then you have basically a sugar that's made out of two sugar molecules. And the more you go, and the longer the chain actually goes, the harder it is for our body to digest all the thing and get the actual energy out of there. Therefore, eventually our body is like, yeah, but we cannot process this, and therefore it's fiber, and therefore we do not even take energy out of this. Now the thing is, in the past this used to be very fine, but now of course there are two things that kick in for one, kick in. For one, whenever when we make these foods more available, and also by growing grains and also by adapting the grains in order for them to grow better, because that's just selection. It's basically it's basically evolution, but kind of taken over by the humans because they just select the seeds that did the best and this is what would also happen in evolution but just on a much larger scale and in terms of uh, time. Now the thing is that for one we took all these foods and optimized them for just energy because energy is the most important thing I guess and also optimized them for taste and in the past taste of course is the thing that makes us eat what we actually need to eat. If we crave carbs initially this was a process not a process but this was like a process yeah it's a process in us an indicator for us that we actually needed carbs if we craved something that's like us like very spicy then in nowadays society we just may crave something rich in protein something like meat or something like nuts maybe with some spices added to it or something like an egg so now the thing is that our body used to be pretty good at actually just making us do the things or making us eat the things it actually needed because I mean that's just how it works if you take a look at animals in the wild basically there are no fat animals or obese animals in the wild in wildlife this just doesn't happen only if these animals get in contact with human food so basically processed food food which is not like which is not in its state where how which is not in a state or in the same state as it would have appeared or as it does appear in nature. This is not an argument for being a hippie, but 
what I am saying, and this is also something that's very much, I think, to a huge extent true, is that the more the human instinct of also making money kicks in, the more we optimize for taste and not optimize for the ideal nutrition. And the more we optimize for taste, and since we kind of found the hack to hack our taste, because the thing is, in the past, something that tasted very nice was something that was very good for us because it was very energy rich but now if you take the best thing that's available in nature like a fruit for example and then you just take the take the taste of a fruit like an apple and then you put it into chewing gum and make it 10 times as sweet then what happens is that the 10 times sweetness or the double time sweetness is just something we adapt to and therefore the actual fruit doesn't taste really sweet anymore i heard this thing where somebody went on to the keto diet or just on the natural diet and he was like yeah i, I can actually taste the sweetness in foods. This is also something I experienced. I tried a lot of different things, like also stevia. Stevia is basically the best sweetener if you really need sweet things and you want to replace sweet things, maybe also replace fruits with vegetables and just sweeting them with something that doesn't have any calories, which is also something that also doesn't impact our the gut bacteria which is also very important and things like this then you just take stevia then you only have the the problem that you get just a little bit hungrier by adding the sweetness maybe in the long term and you also of course i have still the taste problem but the thing is the sweeter you make things i mean taste is just a thing that adapts so if you go on a diet that is for example ketogenic that means you only you basically try to leave out the carbs entirely and what this does for you is it basically makes the food less attractive to you because you go more into fat burning and therefore the hunger actually decreases therefore this mechanism i told you earlier about which is just a thesis i kind of developed that um, whenever food was available it also made sense to be hungry again because it is very likely that the food would be available or will be available again in the near future so now why does our evolutionary brain fail at all of these foods that are basically 60 to 80 percent of the supermarket? Because these foods are just better than what nature could ever provide in terms of evolutionary checkpoint. Therefore, whenever we would potentially go to the supermarket and whenever we have like a muesli that is like very crunchy, but also it's just also the loudness. I mean, there are very, it's not only the taste, it's also how it feels and also how the chewing experience is. And just biting in something that is crunchy, for example, and then we have this thing that the more contrasty it is, so the more contrast is that is in it, for example, biting into something that's very sweet, but also is like very very smooth, for example, like chocolate, like chocolate that basically melts on the tongue. That This is just an experience in itself, kind of. And this is not the idea of food. This is not what food is meant for. Food is just a tool. Food is just a tool that goes into your body and then your body kind of makes itself out of the food or regenerates itself out of the food. Everything you produce, you are able to produce it because of the food that's in you. And you now, I mean, that's just a very basic calculation, but if you improve the food, you essentially are improving you in the long term because then you are made out of better things because the body replaces itself every now and then like hair for example the hair you are currently having could be made either of junk food or could be made of good food i mean this doesn't really impact the quality of the hair but in the long term of course this impacts the body i mean this would if you switch from now to very healthy food this could potentially mean that you live like maybe a few days maybe a few weeks maybe a few years longer potentially now as a final conclusion why does our evolutionary brain fail at, or why does our evolutionary optimized brain fail at all these foods because the human instinct to also make money of course off of food is just maybe i have to go deeper into this before i draw the final conclusion the thing is if there are two restaurant owners and one finds out a way to make the food maybe one percent better maybe just one percent crunchier they sell the same stuff but the thing is just one percent crunchier so for example it could be that uh both supply bananas both have suppliers who of course supply bananas to the actual sellers. So now, if the one searched on the internet and found like a banana that's like 1% sweeter, then he would just change it to 1% sweeter. And therefore, most people who don't optimize for 
uh, health, but optimize for how good the food tastes, would be like, yeah, yeah, this banana, and then we buy this banana. Of course, 1% isn't really much, but then the other dude would be like, yeah, and now I'm selling not that many bananas. Maybe he's selling, like, not 1% more bananas, but of course, the people are fixed, at least that's the assumption, and therefore, we have, like, 1% less sales when it comes to the other dude, because we assume that both had the same amount of customers before. Now, the problem, of course, is that eventually uh, the other dude will be maybe finding something sweeter again. And this process just goes on and on. And this is the process. This is like a very single step. But imagine a marketing company at Muggy, for example, that is like, yeah, we found something that makes the Muggy soup even more tastier. Even if it's like 0.5%, then of course they put it in there. Unless the demand changes into something that is actually, for example, the demand changes in a way that is like, oh, we actually have to read what is in there and then we just don't buy the food anymore because it's not healthy. That, of course, could also happen. But the thing that primarily happens when it comes to food is that we still optimize for taste and not optimize on a subconscious level, on an evolutionary brainy level. Of course, this also happens, but yeah, that is that is exactly what happens because we don't optimize like for <laughs> it's very hard to optimize on a rational level for how healthy the food is and how good the food is for you because the other thing is just more dominant I guess because the other thing is just subconscious the other thing is just like yeah, yeah but I'm hungry and I want muesli now why does the evolutionary optimized brain fail when it comes to these foods because there is human basically because of the human component in the food in the food because of because of this principle that if one finds something that is a little bit better, then he gets more customers because of the taste. And this just happens again and again and again, or happened again and again, and now we have food that is basically junk. There's basically, of course, it's still energy dense, and it, you could still eat it. But the thing is, there is just a better way of having the actual nutrients provided to you. It's like the best comparison I came up with when trying to put this first into a blog post is this. Imagine you get an offer to get a car and free fuel for the rest of your life. Or what you could also get is a car and you get fuel, but only a limited amount of fuel. But what you also would get is the repair every once and then if you just needed a repair. The thing is, eventually the car breaks down and the one with the infinite amount of, of fuel would just go like, yeah, but that's not a problem, let's just go on. And the other one would be like, yeah, but maybe just fix things, because fixing is for free. And it's the same with food. If we have the energy-rich junk food, it just, of course, it provides the energy, but it doesn't provide the actual thing we need. For example, also, not only the macronutrients, but also the micronutrients, the vitamins, the minerals. Therefore, it's like not having the actual repair function when it comes to these two offers. It's like not getting the repairs for free, but you would have to pay for the repair externally, and this is what happens if you then are like age 75, and you need an operation that you wouldn't have needed otherwise, and of course you are not, not like, yeah, but I want to do this operation already at age 30, because maybe then the car doesn't break down. Of course, when it comes to operations and uh, surgical procedures, this is an entirely different story. I just wanted to make an uh, analogy, uh, to draw an analogy, if this is a phrase I can use, to the car example. And that's the final conclusion. So, why is all the food or most of the food we have pretty much junk food because it's optimized for the wrong thing. It's optimized for taste and it's better than the thing nature could produce and therefore it's just optimized by humans for taste and therefore this is something that's not very good, I guess. And But you can change it. You can change it by just adapting to it and by just cutting all of it out and then your taste actually adapts to the thing. This could mean that if you get off of sweet things entirely, then eventually after... This is something that I experienced like so many times. But the thing is, if you, for example, get out of, of sugar and maybe also off of fruit, then if eventually you taste something like fruit, then it's like, it's so sweet. And that's how you can get off of these things.